Okay, now the last thing that we need to work on the ICE is the authentication and authorization policies. So now we need to go to our policy sets. And if you're not familiar with policy sets, instead of a flat top to bottom match table, and now we kind of add a two level hierarchy to this, so you can group the like services under the same group of policies, just like how if you were familiar with the ACS uh, version 5. So here we have the default policy set, but we're going to create a new one for our wireless. So here we'll click create above, policy set. On the right hand side, we can edit the name. And for the name, we're going to call it the uh, WLAN. And for our condition, we need to match the request coming in and kind of sort out which request is a considered wireless. So we're going to do that based on a radius attribute called NAS port type. So here we'll choose radius. And then if you kind of scroll down to the bottom, you'll see right here NAS port type. And for a radius to be considered wireless for the request, it's going to have a NAS port type for wireless IEEE 802.11. Okay, and then if you want just to be absolutely certain that it is a type of wireless request for radius, then we can also add another attribute value condition based on a device type. WLC right here, our device types WLC, and that's why we have uh, created the network device group previously. So we can use that as part of our conditions. Okay, done. So once the radius request has been determined as a wireless type of radius request, then we're going to have to go through the authentication process. Since we're not doing anything fancy here, we're just going to use our AD for our database and not really condition based on any type of request. We can go ahead and use the default rule. And for allow protocol, the default network access will be sufficient. And that already includes the PEEP and EEP TLS, which we'll be using in this scenario. But for our database, instead of the default internal user, we're going to be pointing to our identity source sequence that we saw earlier with cert and AD local guests. Okay, and if you want to use the same rule for your other wireless map as well, then you can change this if user not found options to continue. All right, done in this way, a single default authentication policy rule can take care of pretty much most of your wireless radius requests. Okay, before we dive into the authorization policy, obviously we can create a conditions and rules, but we're going to need permissions and that's going to be part of the authorization profile. So let's kind of hop over under the policy element and results and let's create a whole bunch of authorization profile that we're going to need starting off with the blacklist and this is going to be for when you mark your devices lost and your my devices portal so we need to redirect our user to a portal that informed that they can no longer access the network and if you look under the authorization profile that's the default uh, profile that's there already that comes with eyes called black hole wireless access so what we can do is to duplicate based on that just going to rename it to lm-wlan-blacklist okay and if you scroll down to the bottom you can see here we already have two Cisco AV pair one for a URL redirect, and this is a very specific URL that we're going to redirect the user to, as well as a redirect ACL for the wireless. And this is going to be the name ACL configured on the controller. All right, at this point, all oh, the user will need access to is ICE. So we already have a ACL called LM-ICE-only. And just to show you that here on our wireless line controller, under security, access controllers, we have our lm ice only and all we are allowing is DSCP, DNS, and anything going towards our ICE IP, and everything else is denied. Okay, so we're going to use that access list. Make sure there's no typo. Click Submit. Next, we're going to create an authorization policy for a supplicant provisioning where the user will be redirected to register their MAC address and download the profile. So let me click Add and create one called lm WLAN BYOD supplicant. This is going to be used after user initially connected to our LM internal using PEEP, and we're going to redirect them to register their MAC address. 
So what we need right here is web redirection. And if you drop down the option, what we need is native supplicant provisioning. Actually, let me kind of update the name so it's a little more descriptive. So let's call it the VLAN BYOD uh, supplicant. Okay, and still using the web redirection native supplicant provisioning. And again, at this point, all the device need access to is ICE since, since the web page is hosted on ICE. So that will be again lm ice only. And then we'll submit. Okay, let me kind of rename this a little bit and have it begins with the VLAN for the blacklist. Save. And then the last authorization profile that we need is once the user is fully onboarded, they will be permitted full access to the network. So we're going to call it the VLAN permit all. And we're going to define our name ACL under the airspace ACL name. And we have one call lnim dash permit all on our controller right here. lnim dash permit all is just permit IP any any. Okay, submit. Let me kind of go back and instead of dash, let me make it on the scroll so they are consistent. Okay, so save. All right, so now we have three of our authorization profiles created. We can now go back to our authorization policies and start configuring this. So first insert a rule and right from the top, we want to create a rule for our blacklist device. So that will be the first thing the ICE trying to match for the request that comes in. And let's call this one lm dash wlan dash blacklist. Once you mark the device as lost, the device will automatically place under an identity group for the endpoint called blacklist. So we get condition based on that. And that's pretty much all we need. So if the device is part of that group, we are going to enforce a authorization policy called WLAN blacklist. Okay, then let's insert another rule below. We're going to call this one WLAN BYOD. Supplicant. This is where it first connect to the SysID and register the MAC address and download the client supplicant. And we are going to condition based on, first of all, a wireless type of request. And we can use existing compound condition called wireless 802.1x since we know they're going to be coming in as a .1x authentication. And the next condition we can condition based on the type of authentication protocol since we know they're going to be using EEP with MSCHAP or PEEP with MSCHAP v2 and that's going to be under network access and EEP authentication and here we have uh, EEP MSCHAP v2. Okay another condition that we might need is based on AD group membership so we only want our user that's part of our BYOD user AD group which is what our employee user or employee one user is a part of yeah, but uh, no one else outside that group should be allowed doing the onboarding. Okay, next we want to condition based on the SSID that the user is coming from, and this is based on the WLAN ID. So here, on, under our WLANs, LM internal has the WLAN ID of 1. So we are going to condition based on that as well. So that would be 1. And that should be sufficient for what we're trying to do, and if all those conditions are a match, then we're going to enforce the WLAN BYOD supplicant, which is a URL redirect for the user to go and download the supplicant and network profile. All right. Next, we're going to create another rule that's going to look very similar to that. So we're going to do duplicate below. This time, we're going to call it lm wlan byod reg for registered. So these for the devices being registered. And at this point, they should be able to get a full access. But the way to determine that first, Again, they're going to come in with the wireless 802.1x, and so we're going to leave those intact. But instead of a MSCHAP v2 with EEP, they're going to be coming in using EEP TLS. So that would be our condition. User group membership stays the same. The VLAN ID stays the same. And we're going to add one more condition based on the device being registered already. And that is part of the endpoint. And right here, this is a new attributes introduced in ICE 1.2. 
if you were doing this in ICE 1.1, then you we would have done based on a device membership of an endpoint identity group called register device. But with ICE 1.2, this is kind of a new way or an alternative of doing that, choosing a BYOD registration. And that has to equal to yes. So that means the device has gone through their registration process and currently registered to ICE. And again, if all those conditions are met, then we're going to allow the VLAN permit all. Okay, so done. And then make sure we don't inadvertently match the default rule. Instead of permit access, we're going to switch it to deny access. Then submit. Okay, and those are all the configurations that we need on ICE at this point. If you haven't configured the, your wireless LAN controller, let me show you some of the configuration that we did. Obviously, there is a, under the security, we've added ICE as a radius authentication server right here with 32.102, as well as the accounting server, 32.102. We already looked at all the access list that's part of this lab, which was permit all and all in ICE only. All right, next we want to make sure that the SSID is configured properly. For us, it's lm-internal. If you look under that, it's mapped to our VLAN 64, which we say it's going to be the user VLAN for us. Security is WPA WPA2 with 802.1x enable. And for AAA servers, we have our I server selected for our both authentication and accounting servers. Okay, QoS, you can choose your appropriate QoS and then the advanced, and these are some of the mandatory parameters. One would be the allow AAA override, make sure you have that enabled. And the other one is the NAC state and make sure you have radius NAC selected. And those are just pretty much a standard parameter that you would have your SSID configured once you deal with authentication with ICE. Okay, so at this point, our system should be ready to go. Next, we're going to move on to our uh, to testing of our devices.